Hi! In this tutorial, we're going to look at calculating present value of annuity and non-annuity cash flows. If you remember from earlier lectures and from looking at present value, that an annuity is a series of equal cash flows. So the cash flows are, for example, if the cash flows are $100, every cash flow is $100. They're also at regular intervals. That means they come every year, or it may mean they come every month or every week, but it's always at that same interval and we know the discount rate or the interest rate that we could receive. So we're going to look at an example of how to calculate the present value of an annuity and then we're also going to see what we do when we've got cash flows that maybe occur on a regular basis but that don't have an equal amount. So we have hundred dollars this year, two hundred next year, three hundred the year after, and so on. So let's look at our first example. Say for instance we're trying to evaluate um, an investment. We want to say, hey, what should I pay for this investment? What's this investment going to be worth to me? Well, you're going to be willing to pay for it, the present value of its future cash flows, because you've got an interest rate that you want to earn, and you'll pay the amount that will yield you the interest rate that you want. So let's say that we are looking at purchasing an investment that every year for the next 10 years yields $1,000. If we were to do something else with our money, we would earn, let's say, 8%. 8% is our discount rate, and we choose that discount rate because it's appropriate to the risk of this investment, $1,000 a year for 10 years, and also because it's what we would do with our money if it wasn't here. It sort of represents an opportunity cost. And then we have the number of years, and it's going to be 10 years. And we're going to say that we're going to receive the payment at the end of each year. So there's three ways to calculate this. The first way, we create a table where we enter our payments, compute the present value of each of those payments, and add them together. Then we can see that we have an Excel present value function, and we also have an Excel net present value function. And we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you, how to use both of those. So let's start with the first one. Let's create a table and add it all together. Hopefully it'll make some sense. So where we start is by entering the payment that we received each year. So each year we're going to receive $1,000. I give it an absolute reference because we're going to receive that $1,000 every year for all of 10 years. The present value of that payment, as you recall from the earlier video, is going to be equal to the dollar value of the payment that we're going to receive divided by one plus our discount rate, or our interest rate, our opportunity cost, raised to the exponent of the number of years. So we're going to be dividing $1,000 by 1 plus 8% because we're going to have it, we're going to be discounting that for one year because we're going to receive the cash flow in one year. That's $925.23. So we'll do one more example. It's going to be equal to $1,000 divided by 1 plus my interest rate. I'm going to give that an absolute reference so that I can carry this down. Raised to the power, I use that caret, of 2. So both my payment received in this cell and my number of years in this cell are relative because they're going to pull down year by year. Then I can click my cell, double click the corner, and all of my numbers fill in automatically. Let's format these cells. All right, so the present value, or the value in today's dollars, of this investment can be found by adding each of these up, each of the present values up. So to do that we use a command that we use in Excel and it's called sum. So you type in equals sum and then parentheses. And what that's telling Excel is you want to sum the numbers you're going to add. So if I add up all these present values I get $6,710, and that tells me that in today's dollars, this series of cash flows is worth $10,000. I mean, it's worth the series of cash flows 
we're going to receive 10 $1,000 payments. But today, it's only worth $6,710. Because if I have invested $6,710 at an interest rate of 8%, I'd be able to make these withdrawals. Here's our next function, is using the Excel's present value function. We can only use the present value function if we're looking at an annuity. If we've got an uneven cash flow, we can't use the PV function. So I say that it's equal to present value, and I add my parentheses, and then I fill in based on these prompts. So my rate's 8%, comma, my number of periods, and peer, that's 10 years, and my payment, I'm going to enter it as a negative $1,000. I don't need to worry about future value and I don't need to worry about type because we're receiving them at the end of the year. That's Excel's default. I can leave that blank. $6,710. I get the same answer. One more function that we can use is net present value. The net present value tells you the present value of a series of cash flows. The way Excel calculates net present value, it's a different way than, than the financial definition of net present value that we're going to learn next. So if we say NPV, we enter our rate, and then we enter all of the cash flows that we're going to receive. And we can just click on them and highlight the whole box. That's fine. It gives us value 1, value 2, value 3, but this command here, or this entry B16 colon B25, it tells us B16 through B25, and that substitutes for all our values, and we get the same answer. So we can use all three approaches to calculate present value. And I'd encourage you when you're starting working on these problems or if you're applying them to something in your own life, do it a couple different ways and it's, it gives you a chance to self-check your work. So let's change this scenario because when we've got uneven cash flows, they're not all one dollar, it becomes much harder. Well, it doesn't become much harder. It just means we can't use the present value function. Right? We've got one fewer option because PV only works for even cash flows. So let's say that our cash flows are going to be $400 the first year, and then in the second year, it's going to be $100 more than in the first year, so on and so forth. So we start receiving $100, and by the end, we're receiving $1,300. So we're receiving a cash flow starting at $400 and growing by $100 increments every year. To calculate the present value of that payment, we say that it's equal to $400, leaving it as a relative reference, dividing by 1 plus my interest rate. I'm going to give my interest rate an absolute reference because I'd like to be able to just drag down my formula. And then I'm going to raise it to the exponent. I'm going to raise it to the exponent of 1 for this $400 because we need to discount it for one year because we're not receiving it till the end of the year. $370.37. If I double click that corner, it brings it down, giving me the present value of this entire series of cash flows. Well, year by year. Each cash flow, it tells us the present value. I can calculate the present value of this entire series of cash flows by adding these up, right? The cash flow we're going to get at year one in present value terms is $370. What that means is that we'd need to put $370 in the bank today if we could earn 8% on our money in order to have $400 in one year. If we look down here at year seven, if we put $583 in the bank today, we could have $1,000 at the end of year seven if we were earning 8% interest. So what we're saying is that we're gonna put 370 to take out 400 in one year, 429 to take out 500 in two years, 476 to take out 603 years, so on and so forth. So if we invest, or if we deposit now, in present value terms, $5,282, we should earn enough interest at 8% to receive each of these cash flows. We can also use Excel's net present value function, although not the PV function. We've got our rate of 8%, and we've got all of our values. That is not one of them. F16 through F25. And so you can see how I had a hard time cl clicking on that first cell. Look what happened in my formula. B10, comma, F16 plus F16 to F25. 
you've probably noticed already that when you're trying to click on things, sometimes you click the wrong thing. To fix that, I just went back up here to my formula bar, and I deleted what I didn't want. Now my formula looks as it should. I've got a rate and a range of cells. I can click return, and there's my answer. So in summary, if we've got an annuity, a series of equal cash flows spaced at equal intervals, we can do one of three things. We can calculate the present value of each one and sum them up. We can use Excel's present value function, or we can use Excel's net present value function. However, if our cash flows are different each year, they range um, or they vary, 400, 600, 300, 200, they're not equal, we have two choices. We can sum the present value of each one, or we can use Excel's net present value function. So that concludes this tutorial, and I will see you soon.